successful managers have one thing in common. They delegate. Delegation means appointing another to act in your behalf. Some managers are afraid to delegate. They do everyone's job but their own. the hard way. It's about time Evelyn learned how to delegate. All successful managers are old hands at delegating. Now, you go over there. That's how they keep their departments running smoothly and efficiently. But delegation is not as easy as it looks. There are some pitfalls to avoid. The first pitfall is over control. The over controlling manager emphasizes methods over results and never leaves subordinates alone to do their work. The second and even more dangerous pitfall is overruling authority once you have granted it. Here's the new office furniture you told me to buy. It's green. I hate green. Not only is the subordinate's freedom threatened, but other subordinates will feel insecure too. But you told me I could pick it out. I don't care what I said. Take it back now. Your job will become harder as they look to you constantly for approval. Is this okay? In the future, they will be less likely to take initiative. Am I doing it right? The third major pitfall is the failure to communicate and establish controls. This can lead to serious misunderstandings. I thought I could spend whatever it took to get the job done. You never told me there was a budget. You never told me you wanted it tomorrow. You should have told me while we were doing it. Now it's too late. This never has to happen if you delegate properly. I'd like to know more about that. First, you have to decide what to delegate. Ask yourself the following questions. Can someone do a better job? Can someone do a competent job even if their performance is not up to your own? Time is valuable. Could a subordinate do a more cost-effective job? Or a faster one? And finally, can someone be trained to do the job? Of course, you can't delegate everything. There are some jobs only you should do like setting policy, 
long-range planning, and monitoring subordinates' performances. Once you've decided what to delegate, you have to choose the right person for the job. Yes, I've decided to put someone else on the newsletter. All right, I'll get back to you. Bye. Let's see. Who'd be the best editor? Take into account experience and qualifications, time constraints and workload, trainability, and the amount of trust you have in the subordinate. Imagine each of your employees performing the task you've decided to delegate. Josephine is really good with people. I wonder how she'd be. Have you found that UDC file yet? Almost. Oh, yeah, here it is. Craig, I have to set up an interview with the head of sales tomorrow. What's his name? But she doesn't know the company well enough yet. Well, there's Greg. Hey, Joe, Frank, check this out. Rose Hitchcock and Tony Vitelli, connubial couple of the marketing division, entered the state of marital bliss Sunday last. No, I don't think so. Which brings us around to Frank. Come in. Frank, do you have those reports you want me to type up? No. But they're due tomorrow. I've got to get this newsletter done by this afternoon. Frank is a very good writer. But he's so busy. Hmm. Maybe Josephine could do some of his work. Once you have chosen the right person for the job, you have to communicate clearly and grant the proper authority. Begin with the broadest goals of the job. Emphasize the results, not the methods. Come in. Fine, fine. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye. Well, Frank, let me come right to the point. I want you to do the newsletter. Me? Yes, you. As you know, we're expanding rapidly. We need to keep all the employees up to date and let them know where they fit in. Now, you're reliable. You write well. You have a good knowledge of the company. I think you're right for the job. Communication works two ways. You and your subordinate will probably have to negotiate a working relationship. This is very flattering, but I I'm swamped as it is. I really don't see how I can do it on top of everything else. I realize that, but there isn't anyone else with your qualifications. So I was wondering, do you think maybe Josephine could help you out? She's new. It, it might take a while to train her. You've been doing the same job for what, about five years now? Yeah. That's a long time. I know my job. I do it well. This could be an opportunity for you to do something more. Could be. Present a clear list of duties. Make sure the subordinate understands. Let's discuss what's involved. You'll need to get information from the executive offices about planning. And I'd have to set up interviews and uh, get a hold of monthly reports. You'll also be in charge of writing and editing the articles. Writing and editing. And finally, you'll oversee the layout, printing, and distribution. Establish controls based on cost and time, but grant enough authority to get the job done. This looks like a lot of work. I've been doing this for a couple of years. I'll be around to help you out. I'd like to look at some of your old layouts. No problem. There's still just one thing that's bothering me. How much control will I have? You'll have decision-making authority down the line. But there are some limits. You'll have a $1,600 budget, and I'll have to approve any expenditures beyond that. Okay. Also, for the first couple of months, I'd like to see the final draft two days before it goes to the typesetter. So, aside from the budget and that deadline, you'll be completely in charge. That sounds fair. Give it a try. And finally, make sure everyone concerned is aware of the authority you have granted. I'll send out a memo to the department heads and staff and let them know that you're in charge. Thanks, Evelyn. Thank you, Frank. Hello? Oh, hello, Reuben. You know, I was just about to call you to let you know that Frank Shapiro is going to be in charge of the newsletter. Frank Shapiro, editor. Yes, Mr. Neal. Tomorrow at 3.30. Looks 
good. Bring it. This is really interesting, Frank. Nice layout. <laughs> and we even came in under budget. <laughs> So you're leaving at five. Things are running smoothly. Have you finished delegating everything you wanted to? Well, you never finish delegating. It's an ongoing process. Could you sum it up for us? Sure. First, uh, decide what tasks to delegate. Then, choose the right person for the right job. Communicate. Establish limits for cost and time. And grant enough authority. You know, it's funny. First, I thought no one could do a better job than I could. Then I was afraid someone would. Finally, I realized that if I wasn't delegating authority, I wasn't really managing anything. You know, the higher you go in management, the more you have to delegate. And it seems to me you're well on your way. Thank you. <laughs>